Okay, so good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, dear jury. We are DS Consulting from Denmark and I'm here today with my colleagues, James from United Kingdom, Boniface from Hungary, Brian from Denmark and I myself am Agatha from Latvia. Today we will talk to you about how to grow your company in order for it to strive and achieve success in Canadian and maybe international markets. So on presentation's agenda today is brief explanation of current strategic situation followed by internal as well as external analysis. Afterwards, our alternatives, recommendation and implementation strategy will be proposed to you. And now, Boniface will talk to you about strategic situation. Thank you very much, Agatha. So what we are going to do now is we are going to have a quick overlook at your company and your industry respectively in order to firstly uncover the key issues and appropriate goals to resolve these issues. So firstly, we can mention that you are in a an industry that with a very tough competitive landscape as well as there are many numerous substitutes that are available and as well as there is enough upstream complexity uh, in IT from very source and there's a, a huge capital constraint when it comes to the uh, further uh, development of your organization so what we propose here is to resolve these key issues by delineating these goals firstly what we are suggesting is to create a company with a credible concept where you try for sustainability and a relatively quick return on investment as you as entrepreneurs cash is everything. So the question to drive this presentation is how can Zaragoza formulate and execute a business strategy that will allow for longevity and a secured flow of revenues? Now, we are going to uncover the key facts that will allow us to answer this question here. James, we'll take the analysis now to see you. Thank you, Boniface. So, the first thing we are proposing is the source of your company's value in order to find internally what can be leveraged in order to address the key issues as well as attain the goals aforementioned. Agatha, please. So, the first thing to notice here is that your resources lie in your business knowledge as well as your cultural understanding of high tea and thus high quality coffee beans and thus your capabilities following from that is to have a distinct uh, supply of coffee from a very unique region please act and thus your superiority lies in the fact that you can deliver a distinctive product in what is a very competitive environment and thus we can say that your value is sourced from distinctive uh, knowledge of beans as well as business insight. Next. Okay. So now to some of the internal situation, as previously mentioned, you have your education as well as your business knowledge and potential opportunities for corporate social responsibility related activities in IT. However, we can see that your capital is relatively low, especially to start in a very fiercely competitive industry, as well as the fact that you currently possess a lacking in business experience. So uh, now we are going to look externally to see in the landscape in which you are competing. So the first thing to notice here from this Porter's Five Forces are <coughs> buyers have among the highest influence and it's because the industry is driven on branding and understanding as well as quality. Furthermore, due to these social conditions, they can also affect consumer buying habits. And so, uh, Agatha, so if there is a competitive advantage, it has to be gained from the understanding the consumer needs and desires, as well as possession of a distinctive product. Now we are going to look at the trends and key industrial success factors, or KISS for abbreviation, particularly in the coffee consumer culture in Canada. So the most important thing to take away here are, is, are the uh, high Canadian coffee consumption with respect to culture, as well as having an increase in competition from major forces such as Starbucks. Uh, now, in the face of the key industrial success factors, one thing we can notice here is that capital investment for marketing as well as high quality acquisition of products is essential to this and so far this is something you currently have not obtained. Um, 
What you have achieved, however, is consumer insight, and this can be leveraged in order to overcome increasing competition. Uh, but if you did have the capital investment required, you can further capitalize on the strong coffee culture in Canada at the moment. And now, Brian shall explain to you alternatives for your company. Yes, thank you, Sakib. Uh, we've looked at some alternatives uh, in order for us to give you the best solution possible. The first one is status quo. Uh, that means that you should keep doing what you do online, but not go in and open a new shop. Uh, the reason for this will be, would be that uh, the shop is simply not profitable. So our next alternative is the other way around, to actually open the shop if it turns out that the shop could be profitable. Uh, so these are the two uh, first alternatives that is really uh, what you want to know. Can we do the shop or can we not do the shop? We have a third alternative, and that's to open the cafe or the shop. Uh, and then go to exporting. We have revealed some partners, uh, potential partners in Belgium. Uh, there is a coffee house called Rumbouts and one called Melongo. So we would like you to actually go into negotiating with them to uh, actually uh, sell your products. So you would be the middleman between the high uh, coffee farmer and uh, the Belgian coffee houses. <coughs> so these are our three alternatives. Uh, and now Agatha will continue the presentation. Okay, just to quickly remind you of the strategic situation and the proposed goals. First of all, we want you to create a credible concept for your company that will be further translated through sustainability, as well as we suggest you to have a quick return on investment, as Boniface said, in entrepreneurship, cash is king. So we have evaluated each alternative in face of these four criteria, in order to select the one that will give you the possibility to have a diversified concept as well as keep your revenue channels intact. And as you can see, the two most important uh, criteria are ease of execution and impact, due to the fact that you want to have a quick re return of investment as well as it needs to be relatively easy to implement in order to uh, increase this return of investment. So after evaluating each alternative, as you can see here, on a scale from 0 to 3, 0 being a very unfavorable option and 3 being a favorable option, alternative number 3 to open ca Café Zaragua and export coffee has, become, uh, has been selected in order to strive for these uh, aforementioned strategies. Now Boniface will walk you through our actual recommendation. Thank you very much, Agata. So, as previously has been mentioned, we are looking for a strategy that will allow you to diversify yourself and create some intact revenue channels. In the face of this, what we are suggesting uh, for you to do is to commence with this store concept that you have outlined with the usage of external financing. Secondly, we believe that you further need to diversify your model next to these online sales that you currently pursue by actually committing to exporting. So currently, uh, now you have a store concept. This concept is itself conceptually sufficient. You have targeted the right location and there is a product superiority. But when we uncover the facts and actually undertake a financial analysis, we can see that there is a bullish and a bearish scenario. When it comes to the bearish scenario, Agatha, please, we can see that against going against the hypothesis of yours, in case of sluggish sales, less food traffic, or higher operating costs, this is what will happen, minus $29,000. So what we believe that you need to do is to renew the store concept and to adjust the branding of yours that you have delineated in the case in order to be able to attain uh, the previously mentioned uh, strategic goals. So to sum up, the bottom line here is relying strictly on the product quality to drive your revenues is not attainable due to the geographical rivalry and the micro market in Canada. So what we suggest you to do is to pursue an, a, another kind of a strategy and a concept at the same time by actually leveraging your market and product understanding and supply high-end players with uh, without reach, that cannot reach high but they thrive for maximum quality. So, we believe that you actually can use the Kensington store location as a stock keeping unit in order to strengthen this 
this explore goal of yours. As well as we selected uh, two potential partners in the face of Rumbouts and Malungo as potential candidates. We have of course thought about uh, appropriate contingencies if this wouldn't happen, so please refer to that during the, the Q&A if you uh, find it important. Now, it is important to outline that we are going to be uh, delineating uh, branding and the new store concept as well as um, partner acquisition strategy in order to put these recommendations into a more pragmatic perspective. So now, Agata, please let us hear about these perspectives. Okay, so on the implementation basis, three goals that we suggest you to do is first of all, establish your cafe, second of all, bring, build brand equity, and thirdly, establish a distribution network to become a middle band between Haiti and Belgian high-end coffee providers. If we look at the timeline, of course the first year is allocated to actually physically establishing the cafe when talking about interior and uh, so forth. And uh, we project that by the end of the first year, you should be able to actually open the cafe uh, and have it up and running. So this indicates the beginning of year 2013. On the other hand, we, before opening the store, we suggest you to increase branding efforts and we have laid out a strategy how, which you should pursue. Um, on the other hand, to open up, uh, to become the middleman between Haiti and the European uh, high-end coffee, we suggest you to negotiate with your current coffee suppliers in Haiti to become their exclusive distributor so you would have a higher bargaining power high, uh, to leverage when negotiating with Rambot. In case this should fail, we suggest you to negotiate with Malongo, but as you can see, it's, uh, it's, then it moves the whole opening export thing to a longer stage, so, but we think that you have enough power to leverage to actually uh, successfully negotiate with Robot. Further on, you have to evaluate both the cafe's informants and branding strategy, as well as readjust it due to the fact that the market is ever-changing. Now, when speaking of cafe lay layout, what we suggest you to do in order to be <coughs> successful is to uh, is place your cafe in somewhat like this. First of all, we s you, ha you want to open a roasting facility in your own shop. This should be placed close to the front window due to the fact that it will attract customer uh, uh, awareness and evoke interest in them to actually enter your coffee shop. Then the cafe counter should be placed close to it as well in order to uh, further instigate this interest and um, make sure that they make a coffee purchase. The other front window is suggested to uh, be used as a promotion window for your coffees and etc. Of course, the rest is allocated for tables and decorations and we firmly believe that this easy access and go in, go out, if you wish you could stay and leave and have an uncomfortable atmosphere will encourage the customers to enter your shop even just by walking by, make a spontaneous decision to enter the shops. Now we said something about branding as well. What we believe that you should strongly pursue online branding as you currently are an online shop, therefore you can leverage this. First of all, by using Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and you have to, you, currently there is a buzzword in marketing called content marketing, which basically means that you engage your customers and become uh, an initiate a communication with them. So we highly recommend you use the social media to do that. First of all, you would have a higher customer outreach. Uh, it, would, it could be even global, it could be Canadian, depending on your actual uh, content. And what we suggest you to do is, first of all, of course, promote both online and offline shops, as uh, special offers. Uh, we want you to create a dialogue with customers. And Google Plus and own store, on online store will be used as CEO due to the fact that Google algor algorithms in search engine uh, perceive your image better if you have a Google Plus account. Therefore, you will actually show up in search results more often if you go for a Google Plus account as well. Now lastly, of course, we cannot forget conventional marketing. As you, ha as you are establishing an offline shop, you need to create awareness of that in your local community, meaning that you should engage in guerrilla marketing as well as print ads in local, in local magazines. Now, James will talk about partner acquisition. Thank you very much, Agatha. So, uh, we're talking about exporting to Europe and we have uh, mentioned a couple of partners. 
So the first thing we need to do, thank you. the first thing we need to do is to ensure that your suppliers in high tea have some exclusivity to your company and furthermore protect against any uncertainties regarding externalities with regards to competitors trying to take the same product. Once that is established, uh, Agatha, yeah. uh, we can reach a negotiating table. As previously mentioned, Rombards in Belgium is the preferred choice. And what you should bring to the negotiating table is the quality of the beans which you can provide. And thus, these should be leveraged. And lastly, with regards to control, due to your relative inexperience in the business world, uh, we propose that the marketing should also be done by Rombouts or in uh, a slightly worse case, Malongo. Uh, lastly, uh, we propose that you should give a 20% margin offer and this uh, trade agreement should be reviewed on an annual basis. And thus, this model will provide you the foundation for having a sustainable model which is profitable as well as credible and succinct. Now, Brian shall refer to the financial matters regarding these aforementioned operations. Thank you, Sikip. First off, can you press again? Uh, if you could continue because it froze. Okay. Well, we have the startup budget and what it really shows until Aggie gets back on track. Uh, is that uh, we have some cost for opening the actual shop and uh, really the amount you need is about $210,000 uh, and as you say you want to go for a loan, thank you, for $250,000. Uh, the interest on that loan would be 13% uh, and uh, the payments will be uh, close to uh, uh, 35000 uh, but as you see here, this requires uh, payments for the equipment, leasehold improvements, have putting the upfront cost, which is uh, fees and licenses, uh, and utilities, deposits, rental deposits, and so on. The total of uh, is 208,000. Uh, you're willing to put in equity of 75,000, uh, and as the loan is bigger than you actually require, we suggest that you use those extra funding to actually go into the negotiating with Rombouts and Malongo, uh, so you have uh, investment for that as well. No extra credit line is needed because uh, you have an excess uh, on the loan and uh, you have the equity. So, Aggie? Yeah. One more. These are the assumptions we have done about Rumbaut and Melango. Really, Rumbaut and Melango are two companies in Belgium that look alike. Uh, they are based mainly on uh, the internet where they are selling to customers all over Europe who is really interested in very good coffee. So, uh, we uh, use the assumption that Rumbaut have approximately 700,000 customers and that we can get to 2% of them. Uh, in the first year. So this is really uh, rump outs doing the marketing and that is what we expect to uh, get out of it. And each customer will buy uh, one coffee bag on average uh, just so we keep numbers conservative. And if you click, yeah, you have uh, the same thing about Melango. Melango is slightly uh, <coughs> smaller and that's why we have put 500,000 customers uh, in that company. So if you click one more, yeah. Rumbout is, is a, of course, the optimal partner. Next. These are the sales forecasts divided into Rumbout units and Melongo units. One unit is, of course, uh, uh, the coffee bags that you're selling, and you can see the operating profit uh, that, that there is a big difference between the two. Continue. So just to go through the profit and loss budget, we have included the revenue both from Melongo and the shop, and as you go down, you can see that we actually have an EBITDA that, that increases to $103,000, so there will be room for paying off the loan. So now, Boniface will uh, conclude this presentation, and thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen and jury, we propose you a solution that is going to create a long-standing venture. This is going to be happening by firstly architecting the new store concept and with the subsequent diversification uh, furthermore. So, at the end of the day, Pi actually 2017, but from the next year already, you are going to enter profitability 
and this is going to happen through the new store concept and the brand strategy as well as with attracting new EU players. So now we would like to thank you for your attention and hear your questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. May I ask Nick Jarvis to start with questions? Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> nice presentation. Um, I like the idea of um, um, uh, expanding on the, the idea of a, a, a unique product, which of course is what we think we have. Um, I am a bit concerned that what you're taking us to is a further liability to supply a third party when we're not absolutely sure of the security of supply from Haiti as a whole. How, how do you think we can best address political risk um, and in, in producing this product? Uh, just bring up the matrix, please. OK. So uh, the first thing to notice here is that if there is, uh, for example, political upheaval, as well as uh, extreme weather, then one way to secure that is to make sure, as opposed to having one supplier in Haiti, uh, we can mitigate this by having multiple suppliers. But if that does fail, then of course the worst case scenario is to have to source beans from outside. Uh, due to the unpolitical, unpredictable political nature of Haiti, uh, this is, as I said, the contingency being the worst case. Uh, with regards to the negotiation, provided that it has failed, and after offering a higher percentage margin, uh, it still fails, then we can offer a Scandinavian distributor and the reason we have selected this is that Scandinavia is one of the largest coffee consumers per capita in Europe. So I hope that addresses your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, may I ask um, Kaelin? Sure. I'm uh, equally deeply concerned um, there was a lot of talk in the presentation about the high competition in that particular area. I'm curious to know if you are, if you have a strategy that is alternate, should Starbucks start a price war with you, or should Second Cup steal your differentiation, which is unprotected? Well, we, we believe that Starbucks would not enter a price competition with us due to the fact that they are a large global chain. However, we are a small coffee shop located in... in uh, Kensington, thank you very much. Uh, therefore, we are not an immediate threat to them, as we cannot expand not, neither as fast nor as big in an amount of time to actually have a competitiveness with them. Secondly, if we secure, rather, when we secure uh, exclusive agreement with our coffee bean suppliers, we mitigate the risk that the second cup would actually steal our competitive advantage. That is the luxurious uh, coffee beans that we provide. My question wasn't how you would avoid it, it would be your remediation strategy. So I'm not satisfied you've answered my question. And I'm happy to pass back to the President. Yeah, um, continuing with that, Starbucks may not, but I'm concerned that Rambots and Malongo will, your branding strategy isn't clear. So how are we going to be able to maintain a brand strategy when we're going to outsource to them? So not interested in maybe the big, big players. Well, actually, the case is that Rumbouts and Malanco are usually carrying out their own marketing. So we want to source our coffee beans to those players. So it's not about us branding ourselves. They would sell uh, under their brand, but with our coffee beans. Let's go back in sequence then. Um, Guy? Yeah, um, this whole business model seems to rely on the relationship with um, the European or the Scandinavian um, you, you, you're attempting to wholesale. We didn't anticipate this. Um, it's not something that I was expecting from a financial perspective. If we could have a look at the cash flow or the, the profit and loss um, slide, just to sort of maybe ask a few questions, because this is fairly new to us. And uh, we, we thought that perhaps you'd talk to us about our current proposal, whether or not we'd be allowing our friend to come in, the fourth partner, you know, to invest in the business. We, we haven't heard anything about that. It's in the outline for the case. It's something we're very interested in considering. Um, you've made a good case, but that does rely upon the relationship with Malongo or the, or the other party to make the profit and to pay the interest. So with the best will in the world, 
is great. You can make it stack up on your idea of what the sales will be, but it doesn't deal with our current dilemma. Should we go to the bank, start the shop? Can we afford to do that on our own, or do we need our friend to come in? And I think that's what we wanted you to consult with us about. Okay. So this is good, but it's only good because it's your idea. Yeah, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, you stated that you actually decided not to go with your friend because it would require uh, that he would have 60% of your business. And I understand that perspective. It's still an option, isn't it? It is still an option, yeah. uh, but because of you asking uh, or setting that decision, uh, we want to go for the bank loan. But if you do go for the bank loan, the margins on the shop alone is not that high. Thank you. So. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I needed you to say that. Okay. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't said in the context of the. Oh, thank so you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That said, I mean, we, we very much have a concept of not just the high end product, but the high end service. Um, you talked in your store layout about attracting customers. I'm, I'm very interested, though, in, in, in what you think of our ideas in terms of that presentation to, to, to the customers, the, 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 the staffing, staffing scenario, um, the way that we, we would plan to not diversify in terms of export, but diversify in terms of other, other areas and other outlets in Canada. Can you talk us through your thinking there? First of all, I, I can start out by talking about the uh, uh, employees that we need. Uh, and as you can see here, we have put wages on here. First of all, you need 126 hours per week filled up uh, by two employees every every uh, part of the, of the days. So uh, it is required for you to have at least seven new employees to actually have that many hours covered. Covered, And then we have the salary for the manager uh, that comes on top of that, which increases heavily because uh, you want to go for a full-time manager in the future, as I understand it. Um, so that's just to tell you about the hiring situation. You need seven people. Uh, and what was the other part of your question? The diversification, more, opening up more, more coffee shops. <coughs> if I can add to that, uh, we have kept your store concept as you intended it in the beginning. By having the roasting in the shop, by having the tables in the back for atmosphere, for comfort, and for having a coffee bar to both take away and go out. What we suggest is you to start in, um, sorry, city? Kensington. Kensington, thank you very much. <laughs> By starting in Kensington and gaining a customer base there. From there, you could actually consider expanding into, for example, Toronto or Ottawa with higher populations because you would have a starting point and high brand awareness there. And from there, you could take a, uh, a national expansion in Canada as well. Thank you. Could we just go back to your risk chart? the risk matrix which appeared, I think, as part of, here we go. Um, you have identified a unique coffee bean in Haiti, but it's clear that this is a country which has natural disasters, you know, political uncertainty, a whole host of, it's the poorest country out there. Okay. And yet, I'm not sure that that is fully reflected in this risk chart. In other words, it's one product. If, if you have an earthquake or a disaster, yeah. your business goes to zero. Okay. Is, is the okay. contingency being okay. reflected um, in here? And uh, apologies, I should clarify this. When it says more stable sources, it doesn't necessarily mean within Haiti. I'm sorry, I should have clarified that when I explained that. It may go against the initial uh, makeup of the product, but in uh, unstable, in, in this case, you've identified extreme weather. Uh, so if the plants are destroyed and obviously your business goes to zero, then you have to rely on uh, not only stock, which you have previously uh, gathered, but you have to use alternative supply. So you're not just relying directly from Haiti in that respect. Thank you. Sure, sure. <coughs> Last question. Last so question. We've invested a lot in, in what we hope is a unique product, and so the branding wouldn't match what you're proposing if we can't have that product. Well, it would, because it would still be high, uh, beans from Haiti, but not like you are not taking it directly from your supplier in Haiti, there would be alternative, alternative suppliers who have previous stock of beans from Haiti. If I can add to that one, that's why we want to emphasize the social media and the branding. Because if there is an extreme situation in Haiti, for example a natural disaster or a political queue or whatever 
an extreme thing. The social media can be used to communicate the story, uh, both increase awareness on the general population as well as inform the customers that due to reasons ABC, extreme weather, let's help Haiti, uh, and we are sourcing therefore from another coffee source. So we firmly believe that social media and this engaging communication will actually help mitigate the risk in that case as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.